Bobcat automates much of the drilling process. For this reason, you may want to customize the way that Bobcat does its drilling and also look at what it's doing and how it's set up previous to doing any drilling. Bobcat can account for the tooltip angle and automatically add a little bit of depth and also has some settings and options for how it handles through holes versus blind holes and how it works with taps and how it combines operations together into individual features. To do this, let, let's take a look at a simple, just a drill hole. To add a drill hole to the cam tree, we'll go ahead and come to point and then sketch. I'm just going to use a point or a single point right now for drilling. We'll come to our cam tree again. And now let's add a drilling feature. Now, before any features can be added, we need to set up the stock. We'll look at setting up the stock in a, in a later video. For right now, let's just right-click milling stock, go to our stock wizard, and accept all of the defaults. Let it go to rectangular, and choose OK. Now, it shows our stock on the screen. We'll come back to our cam tree. And for right now, let's hide the stock. So we'll right-click on milling stock and choose blank. And that's just going to hide the stock on the screen. Now that our stock is set up and we have a point for drilling, let's go ahead and add the drilling tool pack. To do this, we'll right-click milling stock, go to drill, and choose hole. Now we'll just follow through the wizard. And again, for all purpose here we'll just use the default settings we'll choose next select our geometry by clicking on select geometry then choose the point that we had chosen then right click and left click OK to confirm our selection now this picks up our drill hole diameter based on if we had a circle drawn and gives us a depth let's just say that our diameter is quarter of an inch and our depth is one inch. We'll choose next and leave our rapid plane on top of part and set this as a through hole. There's an option here for use chamfer. You'll notice as we go through the wizard in the tree there's several operations. We have a center drill, a drill, and a chamfer tool. So we simply chose to make a hole, yet Bobcat is combining these operations to first create a center drill, a drill, and then come in and use a chamfer tool to debur the hole. This is called a compound operation. Now what happens in these operations can be customized. Let's just hit next till we get to the end, then choose finish. We can then right click our drill hole and compute our tool path. If we expand drill hole, we'll see the center drill, drill, and chamfer. I'm going to rotate the view by holding the control key and using the right mouse button. And we could see the tool path there on the screen. Very simple, just a single line. But we know that it's using all of these tools. In some cases, you may want to use all of those tools. In other cases, you may not. You may want to change what operations are called. To do this, right-click Milling Tools, and you could change either the, the part cutting conditions, which will only affect the part that we're working on, or the default cutting conditions. Actually, Tool Pattern. I'm sorry. So we have the part tool pattern and the default tool pattern. The part only affects the current part that we're working on. Default only affects future files that we'll be working on. So for this example, we'll change the part settings. So we'll come to part and then tool pattern. Now we added a hole feature. So in the tree here, we'll click on hole. This displays what tools are used within the feature. We have a center drill, a drill, and a chamfer when we have the with chamfer active. And with no chamfer, it only center drills and drills. 
let's say we want to remove the center drill. So for with chamfer, we'll click on center drill and we'll click delete. So when we choose to drill with a chamfer, it'll only drill then chamfer. And when we choose to drill with no chamfer, let's click on center drill and click delete. Now it will only drill. We'll choose OK. Now let's add another feature. We'll right click on our drill hole and insert another drill. We'll go to hole and choose next. We'll select the same geometry and we'll set our diameter to half of an inch and our depth to one. Actually let's go to choose next. Now you'll notice the only items under operation now are drill and chamfer since we had set this up to behave this way. Choose next again and we can see that we only have the tools now that we had specified. If we come to our feature drill hole if we deactivate use chamfer you'll see just like we had set up it's only drilling now. So the only tool that will be posted and show is a drill. Now we change the setting for this part only. If you want to change the way that all of your features work, you'll right click milling tools, come to default, and then change the tool pattern for default. We could see for holes by default, it'll center drill, drill, and chamfer. Taps also will center drill, drill, chamfer and then tap. Now if we're cutting out of a raw block of material it saves time that the operations are compounded together. If you're machining something that's been pre-machined let's say that we have a part that already has the holes and needs the holes to be tapped well then the default settings of center drilling, drilling, chamfering and tapping won't work. So you need to be able to customize the, these operations. Now you can also load from file and save to file. So you could set up your own tool patterns configured how you need them and then change them by loading and saving them into the Bobcat Cam system. Let's click on load from file. Now if we load our no compound operations which is installed with Bobcat all of the operations will be set up not to be compounded. If we come in and load the standard tool pattern, all of the operations will include the center drill and multi-tool operations. Let's look at tap again. So the default setting will center drill, drill, chamfer, and then tap. If we load the no compound features tool pattern, it'll only chamfer and then tap. Let's take a look at how deep these holes are cutting and how Bobcat calculates this. If we come to our drill hole feature and look at our drill, there's an effective depth that we could set which accounts for the angle of the tool and automatically calculates the overall depth based on the tool that's been added to the database. If we change our overall depth, it'll automatically update the effective depth. And our hole diameter will change the tool size. Bobcad looks back to the tool library for the size of tool that's being used for the diameter and automatically selects that tool. If that tool is not present in the database, it'll add in a generic tool with that size of hole or for that size of hole. Now, there are options for here if the hole is through or blind. When posting code, the through and blind holes have different amounts that automatically get added to the depth, as well as so do most of the other drilling features. Let's go ahead and take a look at what happens.
So we'll right click milling tools and come to our part cutting conditions. Now again, the part only affects the current drawing. Default affects future files. So let's look at our cutting conditions. Cutting conditions handle a lot of the information about drilling cycles. Drill step ratio is a percentage of the tool that the tool will automatically peck if the hole is deeper than that diameter of tool that we specify. The peck increment is what percentage of the tool or the percentage of the diameter of the tool that the tool pecks up and down. Now there's a lot of information here within the drilling so this can all seem a bit confusing or overwhelming at first but it does need to be set up or configured. The defaults will give you a pretty good basis but may need to be changed for your specific machining needs. What you need to understand here is that these settings are here and that they're available to be changed. There's some settings for how reaming occurs and for how chamfering occurs. So this is how a lot of the automation in the system happens. Now if you should go through and first look at these and set it up, the best thing to do is to come inside of the help system, come to your search and type in cutting conditions. And then you get the cutting conditions. This will give you information about what each of those items do, the dwell seconds. So this measures the time that's applied to a center drill out of the cam system. So when the system dwells, this is the amount of time that it will dwell for. So all of these match up with the dialog for the current settings. It's suggested that you take and print this out and then come into your default cutting conditions and set up the default at least one time. And if you have this printed out, you can look at each item that's in the cutting conditions and see what each one's doing and fill it out accordingly to your needs. Now again, if you do not want to do this, the default should work out pretty well, but as you want to customize the system and set it up for your needs, you'll need to come through and do this. The next item to look at within the drilling parameters are going to be how taps work. Now we looked at adding tools by coming to our tools. Taps can be added within tools if we come here to let's say a point tap or a spiral tap. We could come in and add the tap. But when we add a tapping feature to the cam tree, you'll see that it's center drills, drills, chamfers, and taps. And the only item that you have to change for all of the tooling to update is the tap type. When you change the tap type, the drill size automatically updates for the correct size drill. Now there is a setup involved with that that is pre-configured but can be customized and edited. When tapping holes people use different size drills due to the material that they're using. More hardened materials require sometimes often a bigger drill so that the taps aren't cut so deep or the threads are not cut so deep into the material. So if we look at the taps and how they combine the drill and the tap together, that's set here under milling tools and hole sizes. Now by default, many, many thread types and taps are already set up within the system and set up per the machinist handbook. So most of these should be pretty accurate. But let's say we need to add a tap that's not in here. Let's say it's a UNC type tap 
and when we come to add tap we fill out our label or our description of that tap and then our nominal diameter and pitch now with this tap size comes along the hole sizes which are the drill sizes for cutting rolling and STI so if you add a tap you'll need to come in come to your hole sizes click on add tap fill out the description and then the diameter of the tools that go along with that tap and that will make them readily available within the system for you as we could see now this one's user defined and it can be edited or deleted from here as you use the system and you see things that you want to change you may want to refer back to the help documentation and these videos that will show you kind of how you go about going into the system and editing these settings but it is very important that you know and understand that they're there and that they can be edited if needed